Back in the early 2000s, there was a car company that was on everybody's radar. They were built by Toyota, but were nowhere near as boring as your typical Camry or Corolla. And nowadays, in 2022, nobody even really talks about them anymore. Their name is Scion, and they created a front-wheel drive little sports car that people still to this day will talk badly about. Hi everybody, my name is Mark Roden, and this is the Deep Dive on the Scion. <laughs> In 2003, a company we all know and love called Toyota came up with this wonderful idea. They wanted to sell cars that were targeted towards the younger generation, something that looked cool and sporty but was still safe and reliable. And they did. And they would call the whole new brand Scion. One of the first ever models Scion would produce would be the Scion TC, which stood for Touring Coupe and is arguably still to this day their most iconic model. Yes, we have had the FRS and the XB since then, but I think when people think of Scion, they think of the freaking TC. Like I said before, the whole brand would be towards targeting the younger generation, but as we all know, when companies try and be hip and cool and hoorah, they usually send in some like 60 year old dude to try and figure out what young people think is cool and they always fail miserably and that's exactly what happened with Scion. They made some of the most hilariously cringy commercials we've ever seen. Like just look at how ridiculous this is. But even though they may have not had the best marketing team on the project, the rest of the team did what they set out to do. You see, Scion, in my opinion, is always incredibly misunderstood. People think that these Scions need to be race cars that are rear wheel drive and have high horsepower. But remember, Scion wanted to market it towards teenagers, people who didn't need to go fast right out of the gate, but still wanted to look cool. People that needed a reliable car that can get them to school and back on time safely, but also be able to make them think that they're Paul Walker. And that's exactly what they did. The first generation of the TC would debut in 2000 2004 and went by the chassis code ANT10 and it was of course a touring coupe that was front wheel drive. Now the big downside and reason that people talk so badly about the TC is they truly aren't that fast. They were never given one of Toyota's amazing engines to make incredible power out of. They were actually just given the same engine that was found in the Camry at the time, which was a 2.4 liter inline four that managed to only make a very lousy 161 horsepower. But like I said, that's not what this car was built for. Everything else on it was cool and modern. It was something the kids could drive around in thinking that they got a hot rod while the parents can sleep at night knowing their children aren't going 200 miles per hour racing a damn Camaro on the highway. And yes, it is a Camry motor, but the Toyota Camry is one of the most reliable cars of all time. And the Scion TC was pretty much just a better looking, better handling, more advanced Toyota Camry, which again, is not a bad thing. The first gen Scion TC was given tons of stuff that were only being seen on the German luxury sedans at the time, like keyless entry, a panoramic moonroof, a great Pioneer sound system, turn signals on the mirrors, cruise control, and four wheel anti-lock disc brakes, which are all things that some cars still don't have today. And it was set at only $18,000 MSRP which roughly translates to only $25,000 in today's money. For reference, the Camry itself of the same year was actually more expensive at $19,000 for the base model. And if somehow you think that this car still doesn't prove itself as the perfect car guy daily driver, well, maybe the added bonus of McPherson's struts in the front and double wishbone in the rear will. All of this amazing technology and upgraded suspension parts paired with the fact that it came with a manual transmission and pretty decent looks, especially compared to normal daily drivers, made sense that the Scion TC would sell incredibly well. In fact, it sold 79,000 models in 2005 alone and was easily Scion's best seller. And then the wonderful company called TRD would come along and work its magic. <laughs>
TRD stands for Toyota Racing Development, and it is Toyota's in-house tuning program that allows customers to upgrade their cars in a safe way and by trained professionals. They nowadays only really offer suspension pieces, but for the first generation Scion TC, they offered a damn supercharger for it. It was a Vortex supercharger that was capable of making 20 pounds of boost, but when they actually installed it on the TC, uh, it would only make six pounds of boost in order to ensure safety. Boo, safety. Either way though, this added six pounds of boost would boost, <laughs> you see what I did there, the Scion TC up to a nice 200 horsepower, which was more than enough for a fun little daily driver that only weighed 2,900 pounds. <laughs> A couple of years later in 2010, Scion realized they needed to make another freaking Scion TC, buddy. Sales had started to drop on the first generation, and since the release of the Scion XB, the TC was no longer their best selling model. So they answered to literally nobody and gave us the second generation of the TC, which went by the chassis code AT20. The new TC looked a whole lot better. It looked way more modern and to be honest with you it still to this day kind of looks like a new car i think they absolutely nailed it with the looks of the second generation but once again they were just not going fast enough for all of us rootin tootin car guys who like to make our cars incredibly unreliable and dangerous in order to get that feeling of adrenaline and yet again the car community massively misunderstood the tc they were still going for the reliable and safe daily driver for the teenagers and once again they used another camry motor this time it was a 2.5 liter inline four and that extra little jump in engine size allowed them to push the car up to 180 horsepower out of its stock and it was still incredibly reliable it's a freaking camry and every camry out there can go for like 500,000 miles without an oil change to see here folks just driving around with no hood on and no valve cover and no oil still going strong but since this is a new generation of the TC, they also upgraded tons of interior and suspension pieces as well to make it even more cool to own. They gave the interior more room, which was a big complaint on the first generation. They gave it larger disc brakes, a wider stance, 18 inch alloy wheels, a six speed manual transmission, sport tuned suspension pieces, a touch screen, and an electric power steering system. All these little upgrades aren't anything super impressive, sure, but when they all start to add up, you can really see what Toyota was going for here. They weren't trying to make the next Supra, they were trying to make the next Civic Si. Now with the release of the second generation TC, they expected to be able to sell at least 40,000 models, but the world had different plans for them and they said, I'll give you half that, take it or leave it. And they only ended up selling around 25,000 models per year. Not good, Zion. It's not good. But that should not steer you away from these cars in any way. Yes, people didn't buy them, but that's because people suck, okay? Like, people also bought the damn PT Cruiser. So are you going to let people tell you which car to buy? And the Scion TC is still a very good choice if you're looking for something that can just get you from point A to point B, but you don't want to do it in a Camry or a Corolla. The second generation was still incredibly reliable. It was even safer than the last generation, and it now had more room, finally, which meant you could actually carry around all your high school needs, like binders and jewel pods it was a win-win situation for these youngins and i think if you're still in high school looking to get your first car or maybe even something for when you're in college but you still want to look cool in front of all the girls who most likely don't care whether you're driving a camry or a lambo then a scion tc is a perfect choice it's lovely just beautiful you know you are quite a decorator it's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget the Scion TC would not go on to win any FIA world championships or compete in any Group B rally races like most of the legends that we look back on in the car community today. However, it did for some reason compete in Formula Drift somehow. I don't know why or how that happened, but it did. But anyways, the car didn't compete in those huge championships because the car is not a legend. It never was trying to be a legend. It was just the car that was going to be there for you no matter where you go. It was the car that was going to keep you safe as a young driver trying to impress your high school crush. And I think people in the car community today look at this car as just another failed attempt at a sports car when in reality, this car doesn't deserve any of the hate. If you just turn off your car guy instinct of thinking that every car has to have 500 horsepower and be a race car, or else it isn't good enough, then I think you will truly start to appreciate what Scion did when making the TC. The TC is a car that wanted to give young car enthusiasts the chance to start their car journey safely and expected the world to love them for it, but instead, they got a bunch of hate. <laughs>
end of today's deep dive. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tomorrow we are going to be doing the uh, next part of the whole what your favorite blank says about you. I think we're going to do it on JDM cars, so what your favorite JDM car says about you. You guys like the Honda one, so we're just going to keep doing them because you guys obviously like them. Uh, let me know what other deep dives you want to see. Let me know what other videos you want to see, obviously. And yes, I am still trying to find a daily driver, G37 Coupe, just trying to save my money a little bit right now and then get it. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Das Vidania. Have a nice night.